Call the Monday, June 6, 2022 Township meeting to order. Please rise for the flag salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law by posting a notice of this meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building and by faxing notice of this meeting to the Press of Atlantic City, Star Ledger, Camden Courier, and Atlantic County Record on January 7, 2022. Mr. Cheek. Here. Ms. Hopkins. Here. Mrs. Link. Here. Mr. Patali. Here. Mayor Kane. Here. Next, I'd ask you to remember the significance of today, B&D Day, and ask you to join me uh, in a moment for private reflection, please. All right, we'll move on to um, addition and deletion of late agenda items to be considered for action tonight. At this point, sir. Um, and do we have a late list here? Yes. Uh, 8C. Um, 8C, okay. We need a motion on that. Motion to accept it. Additions? So moved. Have a motion? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Ayes have it. Then 7 0. Seven. An additional 7. 7 0, yes. Um, it's on your late list packet there. You've received one? Oh, yeah. I'll entertain a motion. Oh. oh. So moved. Motion? Second. Second. Motion second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Okay. We will move on to discussion. Formal actions may be taken. First one is A, 2023 Transportation Alternatives Set Aside Program. Joe? Yes, Mayor. Uh, this is the, um, the, the TAP grant, which has been transformed into the TA Set Aside. This is the grant that we're going to be working in partnership, hopefully, with the county for the train trestle. Fantastic. That's going to be a fantastic project. I appreciate um, Committee Member Patali and Deputy Mayor Cheek. Um, this is going to be, hopefully, if we can work this out, it'll be a nice addition to the amenities that are offered here in Hamilton Township. So, committee questions? Yeah, I participated in that. Uh, um, you know. My apologies, Mrs. Link. I was unaware of that, so I stand corrected. Um, I think it'll be a, a, a great asset to our biking program, and uh, I hope that we can get a grant that will cement that, that trestle. Fantastic. Committee, additional questions or comments? Uh, there is a meeting on Thursday, the 9th, um, to just kind of, I guess it's a, it's a brainstorm. That's right. It's a brainstorm <laughs> of meeting. So just get some more ideas together, put things together. There's a lot of, lot of thoughts out there, you know, with, between Rich and Judy, everybody else about, uh, about what they'd like to see. So we got to get a little bit of a plan and then move forward from there. Well, but a, uh, very exciting. Very, it's a tremendous piece of property and, and, and the list of things that could possibly accomplish down there for the residents of this town and visitors is amazing. So, um, and let's not forget the historic train station on the same property, so. Now what time on, on June 9th? I want to say one o'clock. I believe we have two people on that. I believe it's Committeeman Vitali and Committee Woman Hopkins. Or no, sorry, Committee Chief. One o'clock. I believe. One o'clock. I have it down for one o'clock on, on Thursday. On Thursday. Oh, All right, uh, Joe. The, uh, we are yes. informational purposes only on that. Are we? Yes, informational purposes only. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Any other questions or comments? If not, we'll move on. We'll move on to B. 3B is the Municipal Property Registration Ordinance. Um, we will refer to, we'll better know it as ProChamps. So. Uh, it's being drafted by our, our solicitor right now, being reviewed for introduction at the next meeting. Yeah, I, I reviewed the uh, 
the draft ordinance that was provided by Pro Champs, I compared it to Egg Harbor Townships. Um, I compared it to the statute which enables it. Uh, I find it in compliance. I have to make a few little tweaks. I conferred today with uh, the folks at Pro Champs, and I will have it drafted and ready for your review before the next meeting. It has to be adopted before August 1st. Any questions? I'm good. I'm good. We've been working on it for a while, so let's see it. Uh... Well, this this is a situation where the governor signed a law that allowed the registration to go through for foreclosed properties um, because the old one failed in the court system. All right. And not just for us, you know, for, for the state. That's and this a... is just going to be a new ordinance that's going to obviously not be the old one that is true and this is something new going forward right okay that's and that we're not going to get jammed up on no when we, did the governor sign this january 8th january 8th okay All right so and uh, the suit started before january 8th or that happened yeah started years ago okay but this now has the blessing of the legislature. Okay. And if there's no additional questions, we'll move on. Hearing none, oh, we'll move on to C, Tax Map GIS Ordinance. Also for discussion purposes, Mayor, uh, this, this is going to cover any minor and major subdivision applications uh, so that uh, the taxpayers aren't on the hook for updating the tax maps for those applications. And now this will have a fee for those sub, uh, applications. Great. Thank you, Joe. Committee? Questions, Good. comments? Good. All right, we'll move on to D, Economic Development Committee Ordinance. Uh, but this, this is um, also being uh, formed with our solicitor, uh, moving an uh, Economic Development Committee, uh, I'm sorry, an Industrial Commission to the EDC, uh, Economic Development Committee. So we're forming out that committee now and the process and how it's going to take, take form. Okay. This, this one's uh, now, pretty special to me, so. Uh, why is the change? I, I can tell you, uh, quite frankly, uh, Mrs. Link, the change is, um, uh, the, the, the simple fact is the um, Industrial Commission, along with the, the realtor, uh, along with uh, Aaron's office, uh, has done an amazing job, and they are basically, we're in a position where we are going to sell out the park um, or come close to it. Uh, we have great uh, uh, volunteers on that board. Uh, I see Mr. Pritchard in the back of the room now, and uh, we felt that, and I felt that uh, in order to expand on what they already done and the great job they've done there, that we would expand the board and have them look at development throughout the entire township. Um, so they will, they will be charged with uh, looking at the available properties and working to see those properties marketed just like we have in the industrial park with the successes we've had there. Okay, so it, the impetus comes from, you know, the industrial park has done their job. It's they're so the the park is almost sold out or sold out, and you want to expand it. That's correct. Okay. I'm excited about this one. I think it's a natural um, transition, and I think it's going to do great things uh, for the township moving forward. So. Um, Charles, I need to get together with you and Joe on this okay. because there's issues about buying and selling land, whether it's subject to the local public contract laws and the like. We knew that was coming, so yeah. we, knew, we knew we had that. There's, there's, there's still things that need to be worked out, but um, it, it's, it's, I think it's going to be a really welcome addition, and I think they're going to be able to do a lot of good for the township. Commercial rateables is what we need in the township. So, so when are we looking to... Um, do you think we can have this on for the next meeting, Joe? I'm, I'll defer to our attorney based if we can get everything. Bob, could we have this on for the next meeting? <laughs> in light of the assignments I got today, I would say no. <laughs> but if you want me to, I'll work weekends and get it done. Well, listen, the sooner, sooner we can get them out there advocating on our behalf, uh, get this committee formed, uh, because the committee will grow. Actually, the Industrial Commission membership um, will I believe remain the same we're still working out the details or dropping one and then there will be stakeholders in the township and and um, business owners and um, 
individuals from the Economic Alliance and such that will be added to the board. So we have a really rounded board to go out and, and um, start looking at these other properties. Any other questions or comments, committee? I'm good. All right, hearing none, Bob will have that on for the next meeting. You heard him, and uh, we'll move on. <laughs> Possibly. Um, next, we'll move on to four, public hearing adoption of ordinances. Uh, ordinance number 1989-2022. This is an ordinance to amend ordinance 1963-2021 entitled Ordinance of the Township of Hamilton adopting an amendment to the redevelopment plan for the entirety of the Township of Hamilton, County of Atlantic State in Jersey to permit cannabis establishments, distributors, and delivery services. This is a public hearing. Uh, committee, any questions or comments? I think we've talked about this ordinance uh, at nauseum. Um, if there's no other questions or comments, at this point I will open it to the public. I, I, uh, I have, have a comment. Um, okay, go ahead, please. Go ahead, Judy. Um, on the forest areas under existing, uh, the odor from the facilities, it says they will have 48 hours to bring the facility into compliance. Can you tell us page and number, please, Judy? Uh, yes, uh, page two. Page two. And the number is FA10, FA25. Is that what you want? Or uh, yeah, up top, forest, yes, I got you. Go ahead. Forest areas. Yeah, I, I was just looking at the word. It may be subject to 10-day license suspension. Shouldn't that be shell? Um, who can speak on the ordinance itself, Bob? Emily, well, I can speak to that. Okay, it, it gives you the discretion to do it or not to do it. If it says shall, you have no discretion. So if you want to abate it in 10 days, that's your call. So, say that again? Uh, you're saying that uh, in, in the enforcement of that shall be subject I mean, maybe subject to a 10-day license suspension. You know, what? that doesn't sound too ominous for people not ad adhering to those. Well, that's an enforcement issue, which is different than the word shall being used in a regulatory body issue. Um, shall in a regulation means absolute, means mandatory. May, in this sense, is you have the right to enforce it within 10 days or after 10 days. You maintain that control. So it does not, in my humble opinion, need to say shall. Well, in, 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 with all due respect, if it says shall, as you said, it's mandatory, it has to be done. Well, I mean, I could see in the instance where if, if, if something, if there was a one-off that happened, the situation was discussed, the protocols were put in place, why would we want to penalize them further? If there's a repeat occurrence, the option is in there to penalize them. Absolutely. Does that answer your question, Mrs. Lee? Yeah. Uh, you know, after, um, yeah, 10-day license suspension for people that are really making quite a bit of money does not seem adequate. I don't know. I don't know. You know, Judy, when I, when I was quantificating it uh, oh sorry when I was looking at the legislation that the other townships had done because I did a, a, quite a bit of research on it and the 10 day was the norm it was almost as if the other townships and across the United States had kind of grasped on this language we're kind of in uncharted territories until we've experienced it once or twice and so for that re I had the same viewpoint you did I'm like is this really hard enough and then I, I sat back and I thought if the vast majority of municipalities in the countries are leaning toward this language, I think I, I was inclined to go along with it until we actually get our feet wet and then we can change it. Um, but it, it, you, you struggle that line between making a business decision where you don't have anybody come in or you are the norm where you're kind of treating them like everybody, every other township would treat them. So I, I agree with your thought pattern. I just, my initial thought was, Let's give them a 10-day warning. Well, they have to do, they, they shall do mm -hmm. quarterly monitoring. That's a regulatory clause. Yep. That's not an enforcement clause. 
Carl. So do we need an enforcement clause? You got it. It's in there. Which one? That's the one you're talking about, 10 days. Oh, so that is enforcement. It is enforcement, yes. And, and who does that enforcing? Some designee of the township. It isn't the police or? Uh, it could be. Code enforcement officer, right? Code enforcement. Uh, it, it could be the zoning officer. It could be the business administrator. It could be the chief of police. Um, it depends on how the issue arises. So uh, the zoning officer would have to go out and, uh, you know, well, the with a, uh, a tool or just smelling? Yeah, the, the or how, do they, how do they enforce that? I, so I, so I, the, the tool or the device, if you will, that's being currently used now, MUA is using it to detect gas in the sewer line. So it's, it's a piece of equipment that our town is familiar with. Um, it typically that tool would be taken out. It's almost like a radar gun, if you will. So an officer could do it. Someone in public works could do it. When I looked at the other townships and enforcement, they had actually hired somebody that was responsible for this marijuana. And they, they were trained on that particular device and they made decisions and made recommendations. And now we don't know how many we've got coming at us, whether that's gonna be a full-time job or whether public works could assume it or whether chief of police could assume that we're kind of like we know we want the law in place and then depending on the volume of work that comes in we may have to hire a specialty but the, the equipment we're comfortable with and i would say it would probably be more in the in a law enforcement or a public works kind of domain so that hired person then would offer a citation they could that they would record the violation and then it would come back for this citation to be issued yep much like zoning at if, that if point. If it was necessary, they would come back and, and issue a citation if, if necessary. Through the zoning department or for through uh, enforcement? Oh. Well, in our ordinance right here, it states, odor from the facility shall be monitored quarterly and on an event-driven basis okay. at the discretion of the township by a licensed, qualified contractor chosen by the township at a cost that shall be paid for by the licensed business. So it says right here in our ordinance that we are going to have a contractor do this. Yeah, you're, gonna have, you're gonna have a contractor available. So my question <laughs> on this was, it's gonna be paid for by the licensed business. Are they gonna be required to put escrow funds in to cover this? Well, this is- or Are we gonna charge them per event? I think these are all great logistically questions. i can't answer that but what i would envision happening is let's say the zoning officer got called out and she detected it she goes to the business administrator and joe contacts a list from a list qualified people to go test it that has a cost to it the business owner is going to be placed on notice that you're in violation of the odor provision we're sending someone out and you're going to be liable to pay it now can we amend this in the future to say it will be a lien on the property yeah but you can't hold this up anymore i want to clarify that any entity that comes in and is uh, going to be operating a cannabis business has to enter into a redevelopment agreement with the township in that agreement, we would address all of Can those Can you issues. talk up, please? Emily, Emily, would you just state your name? Sure. For the, uh, for my the name is please. Emily Givens. I'm the redevelopment counsel for the township. Okay. Um, for the question of payment and things like that and, and how the violations would be evaluated and who would be responsible for paying for those, uh, each entity that comes into the township with a license and wants to operate as a cannabis operator must enter into a redevelopment agreement with the township. And so in that redevelopment agreement, we would outline all of the rights and responsibilities of both parties. And therefore, we could establish an escrow for those types of violations, or we could just have some kind of a mechanism within the body of the redevelopment agreement that will address those and ensure 
that any of those operators are responsible for the costs associated with the monitoring. Um, so here's another question. Uh, will the cannabis owners carry insurance? Absolutely. In the event of these different things? They will be required to carry insurance um, as it's set forth uh, in the regulatory commission, the, the regulations. Um, I don't have all of the detail of that. Um, tonight's ordinance is based, um, is really for the uses and where those uses are permitted. Okay. All right. And I realize this is a difficult breach, but we'll get there. We're going to go for it. So. Mr. Patali. No, that, my, my question really was, and I brought it up with that, was, was, was the escrow. So that's, you know, if that's done in the re redevelopment plan, then, you know, I'm just concerned that you're going to, you, you might have somebody who's just going to be a, you know, continuing, this is going to be a continuing problem, and uh, at some point they may just. Well, then they would be subject to yeah. continuing suspensions. I mean, it's, I mean, they, listen, it's a, it's a business, and they, they want to generate revenue. Uh, no business wants to get shut down, no matter how much they're making for 10 days. And if it's reoccurring, they would get shut down for another 10 days and shut down for another 10 days. So um, it's just an added protection for us as a township um, to have that in there. So any other questions or comments, committee? Hearing none, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to speak on this matter? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public portion. Motion. Second. Motions. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. All right. I will consider uh, a motion on ordinance 1992-2020. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. 1989-2022. So moved. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Jane, can we get a roll call, please? Mr. Cheek? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mrs. Link? No. Mr. Patali? No, and because I'm still standing by my thousand feet from structure to property line, not structure to structure. Mayor Kane? I think the, the distance is adequate. I think we've rehashed it. We've talked, had enough discussion about it. I vote yes. Three yes, two no, motion carries. All right, we'll move on to B, ordinance 1990-2022. This is an ordinance to amend chapter 225 of the Township Code entitled Parks and Beaches, specific, specifically Article 2 entitled General Regulations. Committee, questions, comments? Oh, this is the hockey puck. Yes. No, I have a question. Sure. Um, I know in the past, uh, you know, these hockey, we're in the hockey courts, right? That's correct. Uh, that they were stipulated to be for um, street hockey. Uh, but from time to time, I, I know that uh, we have had adults going there and playing roller hockey in the evening. Is this precluding them from doing that? Well, if you read section one, uh, uh, item P, it says no person shall utilize bicycles, scooters, skateboards, roller skates, lacrosse balls, ice hockey pucks, and any or any other equipment that is not associated with street hockey on any township of Hamilton Street Hockey Court. That's the things that it would be excluding. And is, are you considering roller hockeys, inline hockeys? And inline skates. Chief, do you have a moment, please? I have hockey pucks. <laughs> so apparently, we're against uh, skates, regular skates, but inline skates are okay. Apparently, it doesn't harm the surface. It was a joke. Oh, a little bit push. Okay. Oh, inline are okay. I won't do my joke again then. Um, <laughs> inline skates are fine. Um, regular uh, roller skates are not. So you, to answer your question, you'll be able to use inline skates. Okay. Can and you, you can tell also me? use those hockey pucks that our administrator was discussing at the last meeting. <laughs> can you tell me? The board, can you tell me yeah. the difference between roller skates and? I, I would have to to ask an expert for that, and I would have to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't tell you. I I, I can say that inline. Uh, uh, Inline skates can be as deleterious as roller skates. Okay. But 
since you put, make sure everyone has the wheels on their skates and not the axle sticking out. So basically what it comes down to, we, we looked at other um, ordinances in other municipalities and that's, that's where we came up with the, okay. the mandates, okay? <laughs> Anything else? That's Thank you, Chief. Committee, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to speak on this item? Hearing and seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public portion. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Patali. Second. Second by Ms. Hopkins. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. I'll entertain a motion for ordinance 1990-2022, please. So moved. Motion? Second. Second. Jane, roll call, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. Oh, yes. Chief, thank you for your time on this. Um, C, uh, this is ordinance 1991-2022, an ordinance to amend chapter 235 of the Township Code entitled Processions, Parades, and Public Assemblies. And this is regarding the fees for such. Joe, you wanna give a little uh, bit on this? This was drafted actually by our chief. This is, relates to the sports programs and the fees related to uh, local residents and non-local residents as well. Committee, you have the ordinance. I'm confident that you've reviewed it. Are there any questions or comments regarding this ordinance? Um, the, the only question I had was how does this information get transposed and notify, how do we notify the public that we're changing our fee usage? Do they just, do, we, do they find out when they come and apply for the parade that the process has changed or is there some kind of broadcast Nixle announcement that'll go out or? Like if we're changing something that's gonna affect the public, how are we notifying them? So, the so currently the um, sports groups that are using our, our fields now have already been made aware that there's, there was gonna be possible changes to our ordinance um, regarding the fees. So they're already aware of it. Uh, once this gets ratified and, and it moves forward, they'll be told that it's finalized and then we'll, we'll approach them from there and deal with it. Um, our youth uh, coordinator, Carol Wright, is handling that aspect of it. Um, any new applicants that we get, they'll be told right away that, that there is a fee associated with it uh, according to whatever category they would fall in. So she'll, to answer your question simply, she'll be the one that's going to be dealing with it. Is there, is there a way on our current website to publish a fee schedule, to, to actually put in a tab that says fee schedule that, that just people could go to and click when they're filling out for events and stuff? Yes and no. So we, we do have a recreation area on our website. Um, matter of fact, the administrator and myself had uh, been discussing changing um, the website and everything. So we're in the process of that, so. Okay, good. I have a question. <laughs> um, I know the Rotary has uh, done the Halloween parade every year. Um, does this apply to them at all? No, it doesn't. It's not going to change anything. Okay. That, that uh, do you, do you, Mrs. Link, I had the same question because the way it's written, you would think that it may affect that, but it doesn't. So because it falls under that category. Yeah, that's why. I, I apologize. It wasn't here last week. No, so I, uh, last I, I, I had that same question, though. Thank you. I, I have a question. From what I understand or way I read it, this is for out of town people. Or so, so people not your, associated with MLAA or the lead. So it's going to be for-profit um, organizations and for out-of-town folks. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, once again, I've spoke at, at numerous meetings. It, it, it comes back to our taxpayers. Why are we having people coming into our township that don't pay taxes, util, utilizing our fields and things of that nature, and it becomes a burden on our, mm -hmm. our taxpayers? Okay. So this is to prevent that, essentially. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Chief. Committee, any other questions or comments? All right. If not, uh, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the public that wishes to speak on Ordinance 1991-2022? Seeing and hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public portion. So moved. Motion. Okay. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. All right. I'll entertain a, uh, a motion for Ordinance 1991-2022, please. Motion. I have a motion by Mr. Cheek. Second. Second by Mrs. Link. Jane, can we get a roll call, please? Mr. Cheek? Yes. 
Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. Oh, yes. All right, we'll move on to five. Introduction of ordinances. The public hearing will be held on June 20th, 2022. First, we have A, ordinance number 1992-2022, an ordinance authorizing the sale of lot eight in block 227 as shown on the tax map of the Township of Hamilton and granting to the owner owners of said real property contiguous to the same the right to prior refusal to purchase such land in the Township of Ham Hamilton, County of Atlantic, and State of New Jersey. And I think somebody's messing with me because they're getting longer and longer, these things. <laughs> All right. They're testing you. Yes. So this, we see many of these. Uh, it's in your packet. Uh, this is uh, uh, an individual that wants to purchase a lot that's adjacent to his property. And the process that we use determined that the price was, the minimum bid would be $3,000. And I believe they are purchasing it for the same. Committee, questions or comments? Hearing none. Motion. I have a motion. Mr. Second. Cheek. Second. Second by Mrs. Link. Um, Jane, we don't have to roll call these, right? We can. You do not. We do not. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. All right, we'll move on to B. Ordinance 1993 2022, an ordinance of the Township of Hamilton, County of Atlantic, providing and allowing the Township Municipal Ut Utilities Authority to enter onto any and all property within the Township to perform a lead and galvanized service line replacement. So, this is, and I have actually received several questions uh, regarding it. I had the letter presented to me um, by several residents. I guess the, the, the letters went out to Harding Lakes. Um, the letter is, is, is well written, a little bit confusing, and um, this is to allow the MUA employees, if it's determined that your house needs this line replacement, to go onto your property and actually perform it. Uh, the MUA sent out a letter asking you to test your pipe and there's specific instructions on how to do so, and that is at no charge to you if you can do that. If you cannot do the test for them, call the number provided on the letter, and they will send somebody out to do it for you on a schedule when, it, when they're available. So, um, committee, questions, comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. I have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. All right, next is C, ordinance 1994-2022. This is the uh, first portion of the capital bond ordinance appropriating $2,100,000 and authorizing the issuance of $1,995,000 in bonds or notes of the Township of Hamilton for capital improvements or purposes authorized to be undertaken by the Township of Hamilton in the County of Atlantic, New Jersey, Committee, uh, we've all had an opportunity to review the capital ordinance. Um, we are taking the capital ordinance in two sections because we are waiting on grant money and we want to make sure that that grant money is received before we introduce the second half of this. This is primarily uh, involves the road program. As you can see, the road program is, I believe, at 1.4 million this year. It includes the improvements to the Lake Lenape Dam Dam powerhouse for $200,000. That's, that's the township's portion. Improvements to municipal complexes of 95,000, purchase of computer upgrades and equipment for 55,000, public works equipment for 240,000, and public safety and communications equipment at 110,000. I have a question. Please. Um, it's probably uh, just I don't understand. Amounts not ex exceeding 420 thousand in aggregate for interest or on said obligations cost of issuing said it, are we is is that something that we pay interest on or we go I, I I didn't understand that is that uh, the interest on that bond or I, I, I was hoping that our would be here and I apologize, she is here at every meeting. But she, she's uh, virtual, but I'm not, where's the, where's the paragraph? Uh, you're looking it's at page four, page item D, four. please. 
just. This is interest, yes. This is interest on the bonds. This interest is interest on our, our bonds, yes. That's on correct. our bonds that, Existing. Uh, that we are responsible for. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I wasn't sure whether, they, do we not issue uh, certificates or bonds that we collect interest on or no? Well, every. It, I, I know that we're, we're securing a bond. We go out for interest rates based okay. on those. And okay. we have, yeah, those, those interest adds up. Okay. Um, so these are the interest based on, on our bonds. Okay. That's, that straightens that out. <laughs> but that, is that paid over time or per year? Yes, ma'am. Paid over time. Which it says over 11 the, point. Over the term of the bond. Yes. Okay. Good question, Mrs. Link. Any other questions or comments from committee? Yeah, I do. I do have one. <laughs> Please, go ahead. <laughs> um, uh, we have quite a few things that we receive monies for, and the year to date we have 241,000, 241 and 68,000. Um, now, does that go towards the budget or and, uh, the amounts collected by us, like for selling land or finding, do, do we put that, that to goes, the budget? That goes into next year's budget. It goes to next year's budget. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Um, just clarification. So currently the township's about $11 million in debt. And if we bond to this, we'll be at $13 million in debt. We're still well within our um, bond capacity. Bond capacity. I, I believe it's a very smart move for getting that money at such low interest rates still. We haven't. <laughs> and and uh, additionally to that, um, the reason why we're holding off for the second amount of bond, uh, bonds for our capital is so that we can utilize hopefully a few million dollars that hopefully we're going to be receiving in federal uh, appropriations. Put that towards all of our public safety and we have to bond less and therefore owe less to the taxpayers. Okay. Very good. Very good job. Yeah. Good questions. Any other? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion, please. Motion. motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Cheek. Uh, second by Mrs. Link. I'd like a roll call. I was just going to have a second. Jane, could we get a roll call on this one, please? <coughs> Mr. Cheek? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor King? Absolutely. Yes. All right, we'll move on to D, Ordinance 1995-2022. This is an ordinance to amend Chapter 70 of the Township Code entitled Police Department. Is this all the new Priuses? Uh, this is a ordinance, uh, you have it in your packet. Um, this is changing, um, uh, slightly changing the process um, for interviewing within the Township Police Department. Um, it's spelled out, it's very simplistic. Um, if there are any questions, I'm sure I can get the Chief to answer them for you. If not. Uh, I guess I have some questions. Please, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Yes, uh, you change from a standardized written and oral testing to um, um, written, uh, written testing and using questions uh, per, on professionally recognized police practices along with department policies and procedures. Are you feeling that you're going to get much more of a, a a better result than using a standardized so so what we've learned uh, in past um, testing for promotional exams is that the the tests are the same year after year year after year so you can basically get the answers to the test so um, it really serves no purpose to give that test so when we were, the, the ordinance is very specific on who we have to use for the testing. That removes that and it gives us control back to the township on the testing uh, requirements. All right. So, now, as chief, do you formulate those questions or? Uh... Yes. Yeah, so, so right now I have one of my uh, commanders um, looking through um, best police practices and material and 
and basically he's writing a test based on that and that will be the next promotional test that we give from officer to sergeant. So it's a much better process because we'll know what the answers are in the questions, but the, the people that are, are taking it or the officers that are taking it, it'll be new to them. So they won't necessarily have the answers unless they know the answers. Uh, that's a very that good. That makes sense. Uh, that's a very good in teaching. I always found if I changed the test around and, you know, they, uh, they weren't able to cheat. <laughs> now, you're not going to use the same test for the next 20 years, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree totally. It's a, a I, good I can tell you from the standpoint, sitting in on the interviews, conducting the interviews with the chief over the years, um, you can tell. And I think this is a welcome change. I think um, it, it would be great to, and, and again, they're applying to Hamilton Township Police Department. I think the questions, we should have that flexibility to ask the questions that are important to us as a township. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. Chief, I have one question. Yes. The um, organization, International Association Chief of Police, I find them to be a very um, formative, formative organization. My question is, do they have any information that would allow you to enhance some of the questions that you put forth like are they is this part of something they're working on as well that we could dovetail into you're echoing for some reason so so i always am <laughs> we're, we're going to eliminate them all together when it comes to the testing process um basically with, without uh, mixing words you you can buy the answers to their tests Okay. Um, and, and go to a, a, a place that you'll just read the, the questions over and over and over again. And what we realized the last time when the mayor and I sat down for these, uh, the testing or promotional process, is that we had quite a few people that went for that, um, that uh, training or what have you. And they were basically given the answers. And, and it really, really objectively didn't give us any more information about that officer or, or if they were prepared to be a supervisor by taking that test. In my opinion, it was, it was kind of useless. So I this agree. prevents that. Okay, good. If there are no other questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. I have a motion by Ms. Hopkins. Second. Second by Mr. Patali. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Eyes have it. All right, we'll move on to E, 1996-2022. This is an order amending Article 2 of Chapter 66 of the Code of the Township of Hamilton, providing for annual salary increases and increases in salary maximums for certain employees. Joe? Uh, yes, uh, this actually sets forth the already budgeted salaries within the 22 uh, municipal budget. This is all for non-union and full-time employees. So also. what you're saying is non-union employees uh, deserve their raises too? Every once in a while, sir. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Committee, questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Link. Second. Second by Mr. Patali. Uh, you know, uh, Jane, can I get a roll call on this one? Mr. Cheek? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All right, moving on. Ordinance number 1997-2022, an ordinance to amend Article 2 of Chapter 66 of the Code of the Township of Hamilton, providing for the maximum number of employees. This is in reference to the office manager for, office manager for the construction office. <laughs> Committee, you have a copy in your packet. Um, Questions or comments on this? Yeah, one question. Please do. Um, Joe, my question is, it, we, we're seeing a number of 60,000. The question is, what are the job qualifications? What, what are we expecting that person to bring in and do for this sum? Because it's hard for us to gauge that that sum is too little or too much without knowing what they're going to do. So, uh, out through the, uh, I've been here for about three months. And uh, the last two months, I've been able to dive into departments, uh, employees, roles, and responsibilities. During this time, and speaking also with committee members, um, we felt that there was a need to enhance the services of the construction office, um, provide larger oversight, better roles and responsibilities to at least clean up the processes. And those processes also will allow for, actually what you mentioned, um, some of the processes to be automated. 
uh, and allow for the website to uh, accumulate all those applications as well. Um, so the construction office is going to be overseeing, or this person will be overseeing all of those revisions and providing the, the oversight for them uh, and the new processes as well. Um, how will this help the construction company become a more friendly construction company? Great question. Well, in order to provide better customer service, you have to clean up your process first. So this cleans up the department first, provides better oversight on those roles and responsibilities. So once we have more, better oversight, I think we'll be able to provide cleaner, more friendly service. Okay. So we're saying that the process wasn't very good, so we're just keeping the same people? No, we're pro providing more roles and responsibilities to clean that the service up. So we'll be speaking with, I, I can't name this employee, right, because we didn't write notice and it's not that type of area. Um, but we need to ensure that these roles and responsibilities are given to the, to the person and, and they're actually uh, going to be going through these processes that we need to clean up, essentially. I don't want to go into to, too much detail because. Is it fair to say that most of the process that they're going to be working with has more communication between the actual resident and communication internal and external. Yeah, we, we're, we're cleaning up our internal processes for the applications, but also for the communication at the window from the website, those aspects, absolutely. It's internal and external. Committee? Questions, comments? I'm good with it. I'm good. Yeah. This is just one more step. I think that um, you will see throughout the years, uh, uh, specifically in the last year, we've undertaken a process in planning and zoning um, to make them more friendly. Um, we've brought in uh, Ms. Green to uh, help uh, promote community development and, um, you know, I I even administrative review on certain applications in order to make it less expensive, time savings for the, for the developer. But at the end of the day, um, you know, that's what our job is, to get the most for the township, but make it as easy on those wanting to do business here in the township. And we need to have that same focus at our construction office. And, and this is one step in doing so. Um, so. Uh, I know when uh, I was just uh, leaving uh, the township building from the area, the construction area, this one person was grumbling. He says, this is totally insane. You know, and he, he told me his, his problems and I'm thinking, yes, we do have to clean some of these things up and make it, because he made a huge trip to their construction office for naught and he was so mad. I mean, this was a couple, a year ago, so ago, but I, I've seen this happen and I, I think it, it's a, It'll be a good move, a great move, and this is what we need in Hamilton Township. So. Fantastic. Then I'll allow you to make that motion, Mrs. Link. So moved. <laughs> I have a motion by Mrs. Link. Second. Second by Ms. Hopkins. Roll call, please. Mr. Cheek. Yes. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Patali. Yes. Mayor Kane. Yes. Oh, yes. All right, we'll move on to 6A, resolution rejecting all bids for as needed on-site inspection and plan review agencies for plumbing, building, and fire subcode pursuant to, got that guys? Yeah. Joe? Uh, this is being rejected because we need to uh, go out to bid again for construction office. So this is as needed only. Questions, comments? Motion. 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 Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Mr. Cheek. Yes. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Patali. Yes. Mayor Kane. Yes. Oh, yes. We'll move on to B. Resolution awarding bid 2021-02 for Pine Creek Major Subdivision to Arawak Paving Company for an amount not to exceed $61,900. So moved. Motion. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Cheek. Yes. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Mrs. Link. Yes. Mr. Patali. Yes. Mayor Kane. Yes. Oh, yes. We'll move on to 6C, resolution authorizing the continuation of an interlocal services agreement with the Lanning County Improvement Apart Authority for the program, housing, rehabilitation program, income, small cities, and authorizing the mayor to sign the same. Motion. Motion. 
Second. Second. Roll call, please, Jane. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor King? Yes. Oh, yes. All right, we'll move on to D, resolution awarding option year two, bid 2021-03 to provide on-site inspection and plan <coughs> review agencies for the electrical subcode to Trinity Code Inspections, LLC, Cape May, New Jersey, in the amount of 100% of the department fees for the period June 1, 2022 May to through May 31, 2023, not to exceed $125,000. So moved. Motion by Mr. Patali. Second. Second by Mrs. Link. Jane, roll call, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. All right, we'll move on to the consent agenda. We have items 7A through 7O. Good. Other question. Okay. Well, which one? Uh, just uh, under business registration. I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing the acronym ACRC is Atlantic City Registration. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. That's I have one comment. Uh, you'll see TNT Fireworks on there. I just want to compliment Mr. Patali and the Chief. Um, that is for National Night Out. Fireworks are coming back to Mays Landing. They've done a great job making that happen. Does anyone else want to um have any questions or have anything they would need to pull on this if not i'll entertain a motion to approve please so moved motion second, second. all in favor signify by saying aye. aye aye opposed ayes have it all right we'll move on to eight personnel resolution appointing susan guyberson as jiff Fund Commissioner at the amount of $2,750 annually for the additional duties. Motion. Motion. Who was doing that? I right, believe. Right here, sir. We switched. <laughs> that would be me. I'm switching from alternate to. Uh... Oh, you're, you're going to alternate. Yes. Sir. Okay, that's right. The, that one word, alternate. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Uh, Jane, roll call, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Um, yes. Mayor King? Yes. Oh, yes. And then we'll move on to B, resolution appointing Joseph Kosecki as GIF alternate fund commissioner. Isn't that a change in the batting order? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> motion. Motion. Mr. Cheek? Second. Second, Mrs. Link. Uh, Jane, roll call, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. Oh, yes. We will move on to C, resolutions appointing co staff for 2022. Mr. Sandman, do I have to read each one of these names? You do not. Okay. And we're going to add C A. Um, in there, it is on your agenda late item list. You're adding one individual to this, please. Not adding, we're just changing. Changing, changing. the uh, hourly rate. Or, uh, or no, it's CA. So I'm assuming that's a. So going from head lifeguard to head lifeguard slash day manager from 16 to 18. Yes, because that's, she will be doing her manager. Yes, she has a role. role. Yes, thank you. Any questions or comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Link. Second. Second by Mr. Patali. Jane, roll, talk, roll call, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Kane? Yes. Oh, yes. All right, we'll move on to A, minutes. Regular meeting minutes of May 16, 2022. So moved. Motion? Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, 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 Judy, you're. Is that your by phone or no? No. no? Okay. Judy, you abstain? Yes, we're yeah, just going to abstain. Uh, uh, all in favor with uh, one exception, uh, one abstention, Mrs. Link, please. B, bill, bill list total $1,005,872.79.
Come on, that's an easy one, guys. We did I, 10 million. Too. <laughs> yep. Come on, Come on Carl. Come Second. On. Second. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Cheek? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Patali? I, 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 I have a one comment. So this trellis that we're buying, where is this trellis going? It's going in the park next to the statue, closer on the county property. And the purpose of the trellis is so that the marriages that are conducted at the park, that the people have a warm and fuzzy welcoming um, marriage. And I'm I'm am I'm, I'm all for it. I just want to go on the record that that is War Memorial Park, and it should stay War Memorial Park. And I just want to make sure that the trellis isn't going to be left, you know, in the right there by the statue or anything like that. It should be off to the side, by the county building. And uh, I just you know, that's War Memorial Park. And I just uh, that's that's my feeling. That's, and I just I saw it on the, on the bill list, and I just wanted to bring that up. That's all. Um, so yes. Mayor King. Yes. Uh, which which one are we talking about? I think any time we can add amenities that, oh, that the bill help list. enhance the experience that our residents have and um, transients to this town, it's a it's a welcome. I appreciate your comments, but I, I think it's a it's a welcome addition. So um, we'll move on to reports, Mr. Administrator. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the township continues to utilize CDBG grants, focusing on improving ADA bathrooms at Underhill Park, and a request was made uh, to the county for uh, switching ADA doors uh, to the MISPA annex. Uh, we are in the uh, process of uh, looking at establishing um, a local arts agency as a 501c3 as a potential way to improve the Duberson School uh, as a performing arts center. We'll see. Uh, the township met with ACIT to establish a stronger partnership with the school system for educational and recreational opportunities. Uh, we anticipate increased student involvement in the fall. Uh, departments will be meeting with ACIT and Oak Crest AP government students to discuss civic engagement and local government. Um, the township started an onboarding process with Planet Civic for residents and businesses, and uh, it should be opening its first questionnaire this week. Uh, we uh, have completed um, the hard copies are received um, from Park Road Sidewalk easement questionnaire are being sent back to Town Hall and we're being uh, to continue on going right now. The township attended the Atlantic County uh, Mayor's Association meeting and spoke on the need for coordinated efforts and shared service to reduce costs uh, and to also help our neighboring municipalities. Uh, we did uh, resumed contract negotiations with dispatchers and uh, administration is acting uh, on budget raises for departmental improvements as you see. Uh, we're further researching ways to improve the employee work environment and morale via non-monetary uh, me, uh, non benefits. That's my report. Thank you. Fantastic. Any comments, questions? Sure. Question. Sure. Um, Joe, on the um, Historic Preservation um, Commission, HPC, let me get that right. Um, we had some anomalies. We had some clerical errors in, in some of the forms. And in one in particular, um, we were directed by our council as to a certain format. And I had asked you about that earlier today. Could you tell me what the status is, of that one is? Uh, well, I wasn't able to look at that because it was just about an hour ago. But okay. um, I can tell you that we um, working with Bob with that. He gave uh, one comment. But we were also working with our other um, solicitor, uh, Mr. Feinberg, who's Great. drafting okay. uh, that, that board. So um, I would be able to give you a more definitive answer once I speak with him. Um, in, in more length. I can get that to you tomorrow. If, if, if this week would be great. I, I just, I'm looking for status and closure. Not a problem. Yeah, he, he did promise to, to provide that to us this week. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, could I also have a copy of that? Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Mr. Solicitor. Pleased to say I have nothing to report. It's always good <laughs> when you have nothing to report. Here's the guy we're all waiting for, Mr. Engineer. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Mayor. Uh, really, the only main thing other than the report that's submitted, I'm uh, working with Joe and Aaron on a couple of different grant projects uh, to see what opportunities are out there, some parents, some estimates, and some concepts. Other than that, if there's any questions on my report, that would be it. Fantastic. Thank you, Joe. Well, all right. Ms. Hopkins, we'll start with you this evening. Uh, oh, right turkey. Um, dog park. I'm going to talk a little bit about the dog park. We met with the county on Thursday. Um, we had kind of decided how much space we need. The county is looking at the prints that are coming back. Um, we're going to have to go through Pinelands. 
So we're probably a year out on the dog park, but it's coming, it's coming. So that's our status on that. On Park Road, we did get information back on the amount of people that do want sidewalks and that don't want sidewalks. There's a couple of loose ends we're gonna tie up and we're gonna move a little bit forward on that and see where we stand. So I'll be meeting with Joe later on that. Um, what's the other thing we were working on? The trellis in the park. So our county clerk, Joe Girello, marries five couples a week. That's five couples that come into our town that are just newly establishing a family. And that was the reason call for the trellis was if we could make them feel a little more welcome, they may want to stay in our town as opposed to other towns. But they're coming to the county seat to get married. Um, and that's a lot, five a week. You do the math on it, that's, that's a lot of revenue. That's a lot of families coming in. So putting our, our foot forward was a, a good idea. Um, that's all I've got for now. Fantastic, thank you. And it was a very, uh, very good meeting. I was happy to be in attendance with you, um, as, as well as Deputy Mayor. I, I, looking forward to it. I think uh, I love the work that you've done on it, and we're looking forward to it. So thank you, Ms. Slink. Oh well, um, I've been overwhelmed by the gun violence that has occurred throughout our country and I can remember the year 2000 I rollerbladed down Constitution Avenue with the Million Mom March and somehow we're still at that same spot it's just so devastating and I would like to um, give all my sympathy and feelings towards the children that were mowed down in Texas and just pray that we come up with some sort of resolution that will present, prevent all this carnage. And that's it. Thank you. Mr. Vitale? Um, today's June 6th, we all know D-Day 1944 um, 82,000 Americans, 50,000 British, 22,000 Canadians started the uh, started to get Europe free from from the Nazis. So I just want to remember that uh, that was the greatest generation, absolutely. And um, I watched Band of Brothers as I always do over Memorial Day weekend. And and one thing I picked up was uh, one of the I can't remember who it was. But in his town, he, 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 uh, he enlisted, and th three other members from his town, three men from his town, tried to enlist, and they wouldn't let him enlist because of medical reasons. Those three men committed suicide because they couldn't fight for their country. And I just think about, um, you know, how horrible that is, you know, losing those guys over that, and then also thinking, wow, that, that you know, they felt so strong for their country that they, that, that they were literally embarrassed that they couldn't fight for their country. So there's other men that were lost because of that. So just, just think about that a little bit. Um, as Judy said, that the, the carnage that happens with, with, uh, with these shootings, it's, it's, it's horrible. So I reached out to our chief and talked to him and, and said, you know, are we, are we looking at things? And then he sent a letter to all of us on committee talking about what happened, what, you know, what we do, what the processes are. Um, our chief of police, our police department, they're on top of things. They really are. They are in constant com communication with our schools. Um, and, and they look over these things. They see if there is there anything new that we can do. Um, there's great communication from what I understand. It's, and it's, I just want everybody to know that, that, that we have a great police department. We have great schools. They work very well together. And, um, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to keep, keep our kids safe. So thank you to the police department. Thank you to our schools. Um, that's great, you know. And um, uh, there was something else, and of course now it's going to slip behind. Oh, Memorial Day. Memorial Day services. It was a beautiful day. It was it was a fantastic day. We had great speakers, um, uh, really great speakers. Um, great job by the by the uh, junior ROTC, by everybody there, the police department, the the fire department. They all did a great job. Um, the only thing I'm, I'm going to say is it was really sad to see all the empty seats. Uh, that was probably the least attended 
Memorial Day service I've seen, with the exception of, I mean, the last couple of years because of the pandemic. But um, that, that was the only downfall. But, but other than that, everybody did a great job. Our mayor did a great job. Everybody did a great job. Public Works getting everything ready. Thank you so much. And um, that's really it. Reagan, Maddie, miss you, love you. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, Mr. Sound. Deputy Mayor. Well, I echo Carl's thoughts on the D-Day and whatnot, but on a lighter note, uh, youth baseball, the regular season has ended. We are now going into all-star season and whatnot, and it was very enjoyable watching the kids all spring long. The Cove is getting ready to open. Hopefully the baseball kids and the families will go from the baseball field to the Cove, which would be great. <laughs> And then on the last but not least, I did a site visit on the MISPA firehouse today. And what a very, very nice job everyone has done on that. It's yeah, very, I drove by there. It looks great yeah, on the outside. Looks, I didn't go inside. I hear the I, yeah, inside looks good, yeah, too. Good does. job, Public Works. Very good job. Thank, thank you. you. That's it. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. I, um, I, I obviously echo Carl's uh, sentiments on D-Day. I mean, let's uh, try to remember that these were kids. These were kids that listened to their instructions and 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 performed bravely performed a duty to liberate um, uh, Europe but uh, at the end of the day um, you know uh, we, we need to be thankful for them and hopefully we never see anything like that again in our lifetime so um, Memorial Day uh, again great service the only thing I may I may point out Brett um, of course thank you and Public Works I compliment complimented you earlier today and your staff they did a great job setting up and breaking down um, where the location of the chairs is I think a lot of people stayed back because it was sun. so hot. Um, maybe next year we could consider either uh, changing it around a little bit so there's shade or possibly a tent. Uh, um, I, 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 it was fitting to see Mrs. Gale up there at 89 years old um, sitting there. She would not miss it and she was sitting there uh, in that heat but she wanted to uh, show her respect for, for, for others. And I want to thank those that did attend, those that took the time out of their day. It's Memorial Day, and thank you for remembering. Those that attended, um, thank you for coming out and remembering those that gave so much for us. Um, the MISPAS Public Safety Annex, uh, I did get a chance to, to tour it today. We were there a couple of weeks ago. Um, I met out on site with the Public Works Director and, and the Administrator. It really does look fantastic. Uh, I would say we're probably about 80%. Am I safe to say 80%, Brett? 70 percent we're about 70 percent done <laughs> but uh we're, we're we're on the home stretch now and uh they did a great job out there it looks good outside looks good inside and it's really going to enhance um as we promised the services to the western side of this town so um thank you public works thank you chief uh chief was instrumental in in, in designing this and getting uh, the work done and uh, we do appreciate you for doing that um I'm proud to say we're one step closer to our LSV community. Uh, we got some good news today. We got some, we're, right, we're in the final stages. Um, and I think it's just one more thing that Hamilton, we're the first in the state. That's what's taking a little bit of extra time. We are the first that is trying to undertake this as a, as a municipality um, in this type of a setting. So um, it's just going under a little bit more review, uh, but uh, hopefully we'll have an answer. I, I'm hoping by maybe by the next meeting, Chief. So. Um, that's a wonderful thing. And lastly, I'd like to report, I had a very good meeting with um, the administrator and the MUA. Uh, I understand that the, uh, what we did what we're supposed to do with the members of the MUA board that, that were in attendance. The meeting went fantastic. Now the attorneys, they're working out the language. So we let them do their job, but we did our job. Um, and it looks like, uh, you know, if they can work out all that language, we'll have a new uh, tenant in this building um, hopefully in a very, very near future. So uh, it may have taken a little bit to get to this point, but everybody's on the same page. And once again, it's just another enhancement for uh, having everything in one location is just an enhancement for the residents of this town. So looking forward to it. It's an exciting thing. And, and hopefully, it, again, it makes the things more efficient for people and saves additional money through shared services agreements. So um, with that, uh, I will open it up to the public. Is there anyone? James Kerrigan that would like to speak. Yeah, Charles. Um, what's our 4620 Black Horse Pike at? Uh, you have me at a disadvantage. You give me a little more. This is registrations. Number three. TNT, TNT fireworks. 
I'm oh, TNT Fireworks, that's the address for the vendor that will be providing the fireworks. I, I without Googling it for you, I wouldn't know where that is. It's Walmart. It's Walmart. Walmart. It's the parking lot where they sell the fireworks, right? Okay. And then one, one more question. Um, when's the meeting at, at, at the carriage house? They have that tank. What oh, meeting, okay. Jim? Jim? When's, the, when's the meeting at the carriage house for county committee? I have no idea, Jim. Well, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to get a hold of Don Purdy then. I apologize. I, I do not know. Okay. And um, also, in regard to Memorial Day, that should be on May 30th every single year. Because when I was a teenager, back in the 60s, Memorial Day was always on May 30th. You're going to have to take that up with the federal government. Yeah. Yeah, President Richard Nixon signed that bill, <laughs> Monday holiday bill. The veterans uh, got their November 11th back, but they should, they should also get back uh, Memorial Day. Because during the 1970s, Veterans Day was the fourth Monday in October. Now it's back on no, no, November 11th. No, no, I hope uh, Memorial Day gets moved back to uh, November 30th. M May 30th, I mean. Well, you got your wish this year. Yeah. <laughs> but it ha only happens every five or six years. So. Thank you, James. All right. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to speak? Sir. State your name for the record, please. Good evening. My name is John Oldfield. Mrs. Link, you're right. A lot of people move here from a distance to. Yeah. Oh, move the mic up to you, or just hold on to it. <laughs> okay. How are we doing with the vacating of the street, Joseph? Uh, and is Steve aware of, uh, or is uh, uh, Joseph? aware of what's going on with the vacating the street and where am I at in the process of that? Oh, we can't hear. But just hold the mic to your face. Just hold it up. Take it out. I can be loud, but I'm sure <laughs> You're allowed to. You're allowed to be loud. Be loud. Be loud. <laughs> uh, Mr. Olfield, can Thank you, you for everything. Uh, Go. How are you? How are you? You know why I'm here. Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious where I'm at in the process and how we're uh, moving along. Uh, well, uh, based on uh, the last meeting you, you came to the office, um, refresh my memory also, I believe, um, Mr. Oldfield is in inquiring about uh, acquiring a parcel of land. Um, however, this parcel of land um, has a, um, a street road that needs to be vacated uh, in order for it to be sold first. Um, and there's a processes that we have in the township um, that um, when uh, we, we don't have a survey of his property, so uh, Mr. Oldfield would have to get a, a survey of that property, which uh, makes his process a little bit lengthy. Um, based on that, uh, you, have, you were going to review whether or not you were able to get a survey. So that's kind of where we left off, I think, at the last meeting. Well, I thought it was rather hypocritic that I get sold a piece of property that doesn't have to have a survey, but if I go to conjoin or consolidate or anything, I have to do it. So. Uh, regardless, that's the process, and that's what I will do. But in August of 2021, uh, Richard, if you remember, uh, Steve was the engineer, and you were sitting in that exact same seat. And it was denied because they called the wrong homeowner. And they said no. And I know that because when I talked to Nick, my neighbor, just he and I share the property line uh, on the vacating in the street. His name is on the deed, not his wife's. So when Steve called up and spoke to the wife with the information that he was given, she denied it. It was not her position to deny it. So I started this last August. It has been 10 months. The process has been changed, and I resubmitted starting again from new. It is now June. How long does it take to vacate a paper street that is shared just by two owners and there are trees that are well over 70 years old? And I do not anticipate that street being used for the public use uh, anytime soon. 
especially with the amount of garbage and hazardous debris that I have to clean up out there. So uh, I'm just asking for assistance from my township, from my local government to help and assist me so I can relocate my family who is in school here. Thank you very much. Well, I will get with the administrator tomorrow as part of our uh, Tuesday morning uh, meeting, and we will have this as a discussion item so we can see where you're at in the process, okay? Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great evening. Anyone else in the uh, public wish to speak? Seeing none, I'll enter. Oh, please. Will you just state your name and address, please? Uh, hi, my name is Jin Zhu, um, and I'm here with today with the Fresh Cut Cannabis team. Um, I have a bachelor's in engineering from Duke University and a master's in business administration from the New University of Texas. Um, <clears throat> just came here today to, first of all, introduce ourselves to you guys so you can match a name to a face uh, when you're going through our paperwork. Um, second of all, I wanted to check out the town um, in which we were interested in developing. Um, this was my first time driving around um, your township, and I was very impressed with the activity that's going on. Um, also, the strawberry cheesecake at the Maze Landing Diner was fantastic. And <laughs> at it, I recommend it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that being said, um, I know Mrs. Hopkins said earlier that you know we're in uncharted waters, and this can potentially be a scary process, um, allowing you know, a company to come in and develop your land and try and grow a plant that used to be illegal across the country. And we recognize that, <clears throat> and I just wanna say we hope that this is a collaborative process. Um, we understand that this is your town, um, you were here before us, and um, to address Mr. Patali and Mrs. Link's concerns about odor mitigation. Um, I would like to say that we have hired a nationally recognized engineering firm. They are called Fuss and O'Neill. And with them, we have developed a comprehensive odor mitigation plan um, that we hopefully can share with you guys in the future. Um, and hopefully we'll address some of the concerns you have. Now, <clears throat> moving forward, again, this is a new process for everyone. And I understand that potentially mistakes will be made and things will not be perfect, but I just wanna reemphasize that we are here to work with you guys and um, we, we, we just wanna respect your township. Thank Very you. nice, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Harry Rogers, 1069 Morningside Drive. I'd like to speak to agenda item 5C, the bond ordinance. <clears throat> 1997 through 2008, our town was spent into near bankruptcy by an irresponsible board. Voters threw those people out, and for the last 14 years, we've been reducing debt. A bond issue is probably one of the least effective ways to spend your money. For every dollar you end up spend, spending repaying the bond, uh, listing the bond, registering the bond, you get about 45 cents worth of work out of that. The committee has been on a pay-as-you-go basis for the last 14 years. We've reduced our debt from over 25 million down to 11 million dollars. I'm really disappointed to see you reduce, or sorry, to see you re, um, change course and start adding to the debt. It's, it's, not a, it's not cost effective. It's not what you've been doing for the last 14 years. And I think you ought to take another look at this program and pay for it as we go. If we can't afford it, maybe we just don't need it. Thank you. Appreciate your comments, Mr. Rogers. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to speak? Seeing and hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public portion. So moved. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. Uh, next, uh, we will, we do have uh, executive session. 
And will we be coming back in, in the public? Isn't that your issue? No action. There's no action. No action. So it's not my, my issue. Will we re be, be reconvening or no? No, sir. We will not be reconvening in public. Gene? Uh, we need a motion. Motion to enter executive session, please. So move. Oh, do we want to close first or, or no? We know we have to stay open, you, correct? You can adjourn and then enter in public. Yeah. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Now we need a motion for public discussion. All those in favor. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? So the, you saw the bid's going to be on, I think, the 10th, right? 